how is this scored? Uh, the MIPS SRA um, base score is yes. So you the base score essentially the idea here is all of the base uh, uh, score requirements needs to be met, right? No matter what, so you cannot skip them or it's not kind of optional. And then um, so there is no specific score performance score for this particular one because they are kind um, CMS is considering this as like some of the fundamental requirement for you know handling data and exchanging data and whatnot and then um, does it also uh, you know qualify you for eligible bonus nothing so there is uh, nothing so this is something a very base measure that needs to be completed and then um, and without that like you will not be able to even get any incentive and whatnot right so um, so as uh, we've highlighted here the uh, last line so if you are submitting no for this particular measure um, your base score is going to be zero right so that is the way um, it is done so here are uh, some of the you know the high level requirement summary um, I think like we kind of cover that one of the important thing that I wanted to cover is so you should have been running your EHR system um, you know uh, that's a certified EHR system in 2015 or higher so that is like another requirement as part of uh, this particular um, SRA um, so yes uh, all Medicare like if you are um, adjusting for Medicare or Medicaid for both you need to complete this and then um, what is an attestation as uh, we discussed earlier so um, this is not like a certification per se you don't need to get um, the security risk assessment certified by somebody uh, someone so what essentially it means is anyone can do this and uh, you know like as long as you think um, um, as a business uh, so whoever is doing it is qualified enough uh, to, to conduct this assessment then um, you are good and then um, wh uh, what does uh, what does it mean uh, legally attestation sounds a little bit uh, uh, you know a unique term right so it means legally you are saying that you have understood the requirement you have you are, you are able to demonstrate uh, and meet the objective right so uh, that's what it means so and um, so you are supposed to be maintaining all the supporting documentation as I mentioned earlier <coughs> whether it is paper or electronic format and whatnot you need to maintain it and then um, so you are required to maintain the, the whole records for up to six years um, and uh, you could be potentially audited by CMS or the state uh, HHS um, uh, anytime, like within that six year period. Um, so, how do you go about, uh, you know, uh, even starting this uh, security risk analysis? So, everything depends, uh, right? So, um, it depends on your the size of your organization, whether you are a small practice or a big hospital or a specialty. Um, you know, not not really hosting anything and stuff. And then uh, it depends on uh, the size of your organization, in the sense like, you know, um, how many sites you have and whether you are having on-prem uh, servers or like whether you are using just a cloud-based services and whatnot, just with your laptop and mobile phones. And then also it depends on your uh, complexity of technology and whatnot. So uh, your security risk analysis is going to vary widely, right? Based on you know some of the things that we are talking about, um, and uh, also of course depending on uh, you know how, uh, whether you have a single site or you have multiple site, whether you have the same system or multiple systems and whatnot. So uh, the general um, requirement with respect to you know the security risk analysis is all of these areas. Um, it might sound a little bit uh, you know um, exhaustive, right? Like, um, but uh, to conduct a comprehensive security risk assessment, these are like some of the things you need to be considering. So if you are uh, doing it yourself, you definitely want to uh, think about some of these things that are listed here. I'm not going to go through this individually, uh, just in the interest of time. Um, but um, as Aditi said, like uh, we have the handout um, available uh, for you to download. If you have any questions, specific questions and things, we'll be happy to answer um, after our prepared presentation or like even we will be available via email to answer any questions. Um, <clears throat> so the couple of things that I wanted to bring up to your notice, one is uh, number, uh, number two, that is policies and procedures. Um, so a lot of times when we go into um, any organization, uh, they uh, we don't see any 
um, security policies or procedures and whatnot. So this is something actually you definitely need to have. So what essentially um, does that policy contain? So it contains about um, you know your overall uh, requirements for managing the patient data. Uh, it would say how would you provide access to a system? How would you terminate a user? And how would you handle the data? How would you classify it? How do you back it up? So the whole line yard that requires for you know maintaining the security um, of the data. So that is one. So we don't see that a lot. So the best way to get probably get started on that one if you are a small to medium size. Um, we do have several templates just in case if you are interested. So start off with a template instead of um, you know uh, creating everything from scratch. Um, start with the template, update the required sections, and then at least you will have uh, you will be in a pretty decent place to start with. And uh, the next one is um, essentially the physical security. Um, most of the places that we are conducting assessment now, like they don't have. Um, any on-prem or on-site uh, servers um, and uh, other like equipments. So most of them are all on the cloud and they probably have some kind of a wireless router that gets plugged into their ISP. That's pretty much it. And then they all work off of their laptop or workstation, right? So in that case, the physical security um, requirement are a little bit minimal, right? Um, and depending on your environment, again, as is going back to our earlier uh, this thing, not all of them is applicable for everybody. Depending on the scoping exercise that we do initially, so some of them are going to be applicable, some of them are not. Right. So <clears throat> the way like we kind of cover as part of our uh, security risk analysis is like we take this like six major areas, right? So your EHR system, your desktop laptops. Uh, on your mobile mobile devices and uh, your networking um, and if you have any removable media and stuff so those are like some of the areas and then also you know your other system that are talking to your core EHR system say for example um, you are uh, you know the patient portal and uh, any kind of uh, third party um, service that connects to your core EHR system um, including uh, the HIE the uh, uh, um, HIE exchange uh, you know, information and whatnot. So those are like some of the things that we kind of you know, cover as part of our uh, this um, assessment. So a um, couple of things on this top particular topic. Um, we we've got a lot of calls from our physician uh, our physician community and uh, also hospital saying that like you know they are using a certified EHR. They are using um, cloud-based EHR, so they are not required to do the security risk analysis. So um, that is definitely a myth. Um, so uh, we, we've seen in a lot of audit people fail their audit because uh, they said like they are using a certified EHR, why should they conduct the security risk assessment? And also they said, hey, okay, cloud-based EHR, so they are responsible, the, our cloud vendor is responsible, whether you use Athena Health or Cerner or whatnot, right? So um, they said like they are responsible. So both of them are uh, wrong. So um, as uh, an entity, who is subscribing to some of the services, um, you have to conduct your own assessment. So uh, the scope for that might be a little bit different um, from what the EHR vendor and uh, other um, vendors are covering, but for you, like you need to have your own uh, independent security risk assessment done. Right. So let's um, quickly go over some of the areas that you need to be covering if you are conducting the security risk analysis. So especially when it comes to EHR, no matter whether you are using on-prem EHR or like you're using a cloud-based EHR, you definitely need to configure it um, according to your, um, you know, the policies and procedures that we discussed earlier. So what, what do we mean by configuration? So for example, um, you know, do are you going to allow remote connections uh, to your uh, EHR? And if yes, then like there are some configuration setting that you could do, or like you can um, restrict the connection based on certain IP addresses and stuff. So all of this security related configuration. So, um, you know, in terms of defining the password requirement, defining the timeout parameters, updating the uh, patches and whatnot, all of these things, you are responsible for it. So you need to, as a, a 
on, um, as a, a customer, like you need to make sure that you, uh, you are configuring it according to your requirements and according to you know what is the best practice and stuff. And then again, like creating roles within uh, the EHR system and assigning them so that like only uh, people have access based on need to know, right? So that's very important as well. So that will be your responsibility. Um, although there are certain shared responsibility with your cloud provider, so a lot of the things that are uh, highlighted here are your responsibility, including um, reviewing the logs regularly to make sure that you know only the right people are accessing the data and right people are doing what they are supposed to be doing. Right? So that is all uh, you know the requirement. So all of the things that we are talking about here require some sort of um, evidence for you to maintain. Right. So for example, if you are doing conducting audit log reviews. Your responsibility is to demonstrate that in case if there is any CMS audit. So what you need to be doing is um, you need to be downloading this audit log files and then uh, annotating uh, the log files if there are any kind of uh, you know uh, anomalies that you see. Or like what you need to be doing is like you will be communicating with probably your IT team and um, you know other vendors. Um, and so those are like some of the evidence that you need to maintain in case if there are any audit. So it's not enough to say, hey, okay, so we have we have done the review, and then uh, they are going to be um, asking the auditor are going to be asking what was your process and what, uh, can you show us some evidence of how you went about doing the audits and stuff. So. Um, um, moving on to the next one, desktops and laptops. Here are again the best practices that you want to make sure that you know uh, you have in place. Of course, when it comes to desktop and laptop, uh, definitely we do recommend um, some sort of uh, uh, you know advanced antivirus um, and EDR solution, right? Uh, uh, we call it endpoint detection and response uh, um, software. So that like you know you know or uh, when there is any kind of attack that's happening most of the time if you see like all the hacks and all the uh, data breach uh, uh, news that we re read everything starts with some kind of end device that is not protected properly so um, uh, a hacker gets into your uh, network through the weakest point right so that's why the antivirus and the malware is all like uh, kind of critical and then making sure that you update your windows or apple whatever you run whatever os that you run um, making sure you update them and if you have a large group of people making sure you have some sort of um, uh, rmm the remote monitoring um, uh, method to make sure that you know you have you are updating um, all the os and the patches regularly and um, uh, timing out, um, uh, logging of people if they are inactive um, after say like 10-15 minutes is usually the best practice. So you don't want to leave your computer on and uh, you know walk away um, to do something else and then come back and see somebody else has logged in, right? So um, and also the most important part is that there is uh, no unencrypted um, uh, patient data on your desktop and laptop. So um, essentially. <clears throat> Uh, the reason we are recommending that is um, if you are going to be encrypting your laptop and desktop, then the burden of proof is just to demonstrate that you have used the right technology to encrypt it, right? So if you haven't encrypted it, um, then the burden of proof is to make sure that data was not accessed by anybody else, even if you, let's say, you lose your laptop or somebody breaks into your office um, and stuff, right? So that's why, um, you know, the encryption is something that we definitely recommend, especially for, um, uh, you know, laptops, uh, dis uh, laptops, desktops, and also your mobile devices and things. So the next item uh, here is like, of course, you know, um, more um, mo mobile-based device, like say your phones, right? So uh, texting and emailing, uh, checking your emails with that, potentially might contain some kind of patient data and stuff is becoming very, very common. So obviously what you want to do is like you want to have some sort of, uh, they call it mobile de MDM, a mobile device management solution, whether it is your company provided uh, phone or even personal BIOD, bring your own device type of thing. So you want to make sure that uh, all these uh, devices are kind of in a way monitored 
um, and you could do some kind of a remote wipe if the devices are lost and uh, you know you do have some ad advanced protection including you know uh, password and the encryptions and whatnot right those are like some of the things we will be looking at when we are doing you know um, assessment of the mobile and tablet device then the next one is of course the networking devices um and, um even if you are a small shop you are going to have some sort of wireless router firewall and whatnot so you want to make sure that you know uh, some of the things that are listed in here are all covered as part of uh, you know uh, security risk analysis and uh, you have a better understanding of those devices right so um the scanning of your networking device if you have some kind of a public interface vpns and whatnot and then <clears throat> most of this equipment come with default username password you can just google there uh, you know, look at the make and model and then google uh, the default username password if you don't change it then anybody can access it um, and then um, of course you know the firmware updates and uh, configuring the locks and uh, um, encrypting the traffic and all those things are uh, pretty important as well um, so this one is also a major issue um, in the healthcare space. So that's why we kind of calling it out separately, removable media. So uh, especially like thumb drive, USB and uh, backup tape, CDs, um, you know, any any kind of, um, you know, media that stores, even portable hard, um, hard disk and stuff. So any kind of uh, media that stores um, patient data and stuff, everything needs to be in scope. And then you know, what you want to do is definitely want to encrypt them. So even if you lose them, nobody can access it unless they have the encryption key. And then when you're disposing it off, uh, you want to make sure that you follow certain guidelines to dispose it off safely so that like even if somebody else get access to those media, um, they won't be able to recover the data. And then uh, especially when it comes to this removable media, you need to maintain an inventory um, of all this uh, um, you know assets within your organization and make sure that you have a custodian for each one of them right <clears throat> then the next one is uh, you know pretty much everything else right um, so whether you're talking about emails whether you're talking about um, health information exchange platform and the patient portal uh, whatnot everything else right so um you you want to make sure that you all these integration points are also secured as part of your analysis and uh, um you know uh, and uh, you have some kind of comfort level in terms of allowing them to uh, have access uh, back and forth to your environment right so those are like um, you know including copiers printers uh, we are calling it out the reason being you know we we've seen few incidents where the copiers were disposed of without properly sanitizing so um the company which uh, C it was cvs in this case um ended up uh, you know in paying some penalty because uh, the hard disk that was in the copier printer were not wiped out properly right so those are like some of the things that you want to consider as you are you know conducting the security risk assessment um so um i think like we we specifically calling out the security awareness training so that is uh, you know one of the key uh, part of uh, the security risk assessment so no matter what whoever is handling the patient data you want to have uh, some sort of program to train them um, and also you know um, send them some uh, phishing emails and see whether they are clicking on it by mistake uh, if yes then that means they probably need a little bit additional training so that they don't click that link next time around for more information click on the link below or visit databrackets.com.